going to start with a question for Eric from Jade. Jade asks, are there negatives of intaking too much protein? Is the one gram of protein per pound rule good? Uh, If I'm trying to build a lot of muscle, should I be taking in more than that? Yeah, that's a good question. It comes up a lot. Um, It seems to be really common that people are concerned about excessively high protein intakes and, and potential Uh, health issues resulting from that. So um, first of all, let's talk theory. When you go on the internet, you're going to see people saying all sorts of bad things about protein. Uh, Some of the common ones you're going to hear, one relates to the kidneys. A lot of people say the kidneys are going to be unable to sufficiently clear the waste products um, that are made during amino acid metabolism, and that the kidneys are going to be unable to neutralize the acid load resulting from high intakes of amino acids. And so by extension, people say high high protein diets are bad for the kidneys themselves. And an offshoot of that, people will promote something called the acid ash hypothesis, which is that if you have a high protein diet, um, you'll be in this kind of systemic state of acidosis, and that will cause bone loss um, as a, a mechanism to deal with that acidosis and promote buffering. So those are two things that are repeated very frequently when you talk about high protein diets Um, but they're really not accurate they're not true Um, if if you have a a pair of healthy kidneys you should be more than able to accommodate a high protein diet Um, so the idea that you're going to cause direct kidney damage as a result of protein intakes within the ranges that we've actually studied which you could argue go up to even above three grams per kilogram per day which is a lot of protein, um, and beyond. I mean, we've seen studies up into the four range that have at least found people to be generally okay. So basically, your kidneys should be able to handle about as much protein as you would want to eat. Um, Once you start going above those uh, levels of protein intake, that's just not a very fun diet. And and I can't think of a, a reason why you would ever intend to go that high with your protein intake. Um, Now, when it comes to the acid ash hypothesis, the idea of losing bone mass as a result of uh, high protein diets, that's been, I think, pretty soundly debunked in the literature. And if anything, uh, there have been more recent studies that have shown that high protein diets tend to have a neutral to potentially a positive effect on bone content and bone density over the lifespan. So um, the the idea that high protein diets are bad for bone... it's not only been debunked, but could actually be wrong in the opposite direction. It's it's very possible that um, high protein diets might actually have a modest positive effect uh, on bone bone content and density over the lifespan. So the whole kidney family of protein myths, we can pretty much toss those out. The exception being, if you have an underlying kidney pathology. Um, you might want to talk with your physician about whether or not limiting limiting protein intake is a good idea for you. So absolutely, if you have serious kidney issues, there are some instances where a high protein diet would be uh, definitely contraindicated and would uh, really put you at risk and put your health at risk. So, um, but it's important to separate those two things out. The fact that high protein diets can be challenging uh, to a diseased kidney does not mean that a healthy kidney cannot accommodate high protein intakes. Those are two very, very different things. Um, A lot of times you'll hear people talk about uh, potential liver issues with protein intake. Um, You know, the liver is heavily involved in amino acid metabolism, involved in deamination, things like that. Um, So the liver, because it's involved with amino acid metabolism, a lot of people kind of go with an extension of that and say, well, if we're asking the liver to do things, maybe we're going to tire it out and fatigue it, and it's going to be generally bad for it. Um, Much like with the kidney, the evidence that we have available would indicate that when we put a a healthy person with a healthy liver on a high-protein diet, their liver seems to accommodate that completely fine. Um, There was a study fairly, fairly recently, within the last couple of years, by Jose Antonio, uh, 14 males crossover study for one year. Um, they, they were studying high protein diets in the range of 2.5 to 3.3 grams per kilogram per day for, for pretty long uh, periods of time that they were consuming these different levels of protein intake. 
And they did look directly at various liver and kidney biomarkers and found no deleterious or harmful effects. Uh, that same lab, they also did a study looking at intakes up to 4.4 grams per kilogram per day. Again, that's just a horrifically high protein intake. Yeah, there, there's really no reason to go that high. You, you've essentially maxed out the benefits of a high protein diet, probably about halfway to, <laughs> to that intake. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. anything above 2.2 grams per kilogram, you're really kind of reaching. Maybe you could make the argument if you're a bodybuilder in contest prep and you're five and a half percent body fat and just trying to get the last couple ounces of glute fat off, maybe you might hang around higher than 2.2 or 3. But yeah, 4.4 grams per kilogram is going to be a miserable time. You're going to be so full and satiated that you're going to feel sick all the time. So <laughs> there's just no reason to be up there. But in any case, they did that study. And again, they, they didn't directly look at uh, liver and kidney biomarkers, to my knowledge, but everybody lived. <laughs> so that's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, but but they, they didn't have any serious adverse events reported aside from just people. I don't know if they mentioned it in the paper, but I'm assuming that people generally felt like crap, at least a few of them. W one would think. Yeah. So I, I'm not even going to go back and check for that. I'm comfortable saying if we find 20 people and we put all of them on 4.4 grams per kilogram, at least six are going to say, I hate this. I feel gross all day. Well, and probably only three are actually going to strictly adhere to it. Correct. Yeah. Due to that reason. Yeah. So the, the reality of the situation is there's a lot of these myths out there about the kidneys and the liver and even bone health that high protein diets are going to be deleterious or disadvantageous or even dangerous. And if you are an otherwise healthy person with no underlying kidney or liver disease or pathology, you should be completely well equipped to handle high protein diets. Now, obviously, I'm restricting that to the levels of intakes that we've seen in the literature. So we've got plenty of studies above two grams per kilogram, not many above three, um, and only one that I know above four in humans. So obviously, if you're if you're trying to make a point. I've said this on the podcast before, I think, but my general nutrition rule is if you do extremely weird things, weird things could happen. So if if you push the intake of anything beyond anything we've ever seen in the, the literature, I can't rule out the possibility that something weird might happen. Um, but, but within sensible protein intakes, high protein diets seem to be completely fine. Um, and there are many benefits of high protein diets. So if you're training hard, obviously you want to maximize the anabolic response to training and you want to minimize muscle loss during weight loss. So high protein diets are terrific for that. If you're trying to lose weight, they also have a great effect on promoting satiety and fullness. They also have a high thermic effect of feeding. So um, generally speaking, whether you're trying to gain muscle or retain muscle and lose fat, um, high protein diets seem to be a good way to go. How high? That's a good question. Um, generally speaking, most people who lift weights are going to be just fine in the 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram per day range. Um, I think a lot of people push one gram per pound because it's very easy, especially if you're used to, do to dealing with pounds as your unit of weight measurement. But um, 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram seems fine if you're a person who really prioritizes your weightlifting resistance training progress. Um, endurance athletes might get away with slightly lower intakes in the 1.4 to 2.2-ish range, but, but that should be a, a good range to start in. And then there are some special instances, like I said, very lean people who are cutting really hard might venture beyond 2.2. That's based on a review paper that our, our dear friend, the good Dr. Eric Helms wrote a few years ago. Um, one final thing I want to talk about, uh, the gift that keeps on giving, the Game Changers documentary, um, they had this awesome part. I'm paraphrasing, but they basically implied that if you ate meat, it would have a bad effect on your muscle glycogen levels. And of all the half-baked ideas that got kind of lobbed out during that documentary, I think that was the most harmful to me as a person and my heart and my brain. Because I was like, that's just the <laughs> stupidest thing. Like, it was operating under this zero-sum assumption that, well, if you're eating meat, you're probably on 
what a 90 percent protein diet sure <laughs> like, of course like there's no way a person could have meat in their diet and also have several hundred grams of carbohydrate per day to completely replace all the glycogen that they use throughout the day i mean it, it wouldn't shock me if someone did like a very biased funded study where it was like one group eats a steak and the other group eats like four cups of rice it's like which one has higher glycogen Ooh, the rice <laughs> yeah um I believe it, but uh, yeah, so man, it's it's one of those things that like if that makes it through the editing process, you kind of just take the whole thing and throw it out in the trash. You're like, okay, I, I, I've seen what's going on here. So um, yeah, don't worry. You can still eat high protein diets, which do include meat sometimes and still manage your muscle and liver glycogen levels very effectively. Well, I mean, this isn't really my area, but there's, um, I'm pretty sure I've seen some research looking at glycogen replenishment rates in endurance athletes where they test just carbohydrate versus carbohydrate with not like a tremendous amount of protein, but carbohydrate plus some level of protein. And if memory serves, those studies tend to find either similar or slightly superior glycogen replenishment with carbohydrate plus protein versus carbohydrate alone.